All right, getting into lesson six today. Um, there's a diagram right here in your book that I wanted you to take a look at. It's on page 374 in your textbook, and it just gives a good outline of uh, dealing with the Venn diagrams with two sets um, and just kind of what those areas represent. And so if you take a look at areas one, two, three, and four, uh, they're described for you right here in word form as well as notation form over here on the right. So this is a good description um, as well as some good examples you can follow right here. So uh, if you need to see more than what I'm going to show you right now on the handout, um, this is a great place to turn for some more examples and more explanation from the book. But anyway, getting over to uh, the lesson that we're going to be looking at here is um, just kind of working with some Venn diagrams and all this is going to spill into word problems and how to organize the numbers for a word problem. Um, and what those things mean. So uh, this is uh, an example we're going to be working right th with right here. Um, so pretend for a minute that this represents, let me refocus, that this represents 40 people. So that's our universal set is 40. So we're referring to a class of 40 people. Uh, 25 of those people are in the art program. So that's the A. 30 of those people are in the basketball team, on the basketball team. Um, and 20 of those people uh, belong to both the art and the basketball. So they're in the art program and on the basketball team. So obviously there's a lot more than 40 people here. So uh, that just means there are some overlap and some things that we have to sort of organize with our Venn diagram. So um, again, we have kind of the general rectangle outline for the Venn diagram. And this is the rectangle always represents the universal set. And so uh, for these problems, we're always given some kind of a universal set. So I know that within this rectangle, I should have a total of 40 people. So of those 40, some of those people belong to the art program. Some of those people are on the basketball team. So those are the two sets that we're talking about and because of the A and B we know 20 of those people uh, belong to both art and basketball and so when you do a Venn diagram and you start organizing the numbers this is the best place to start is what do they have in common so whenever you're filling out a Venn diagram you always want to start on the inside and then work your way out from there and so let's start by identifying what the area of overlap is so said that there were 20 people that are in the art program and on the basketball team. So we're going to put those 20 people right there in the middle. So I got 20 people. And from there, we're going to branch out. So take a look at the art program for a minute. We know that there are 25 people in the art program. So if you just focus on set A for a minute, that circle, uh, within that circle, I should have 25 people. Well, so far, we already have 20. Right, because there were 20 people that are in art and basketball. And so the remaining five people are the five who are in art only. So these are the people that do art, but don't also do basketball. And so if you look at set A, we have identified all 25 people that are in the art program. Move over to basketball. Uh, for set B, there are 30 people. So again, we've already identified 20 of those students who play basketball also do art. So the remaining 10 students, because remember it said there were 30, so the remaining 10 students uh, do basketball only and are not a part of the art program. Um, so if we look at those numbers so far, 5 plus 20 plus 10, we have, I, we have accounted for 35 students. Within the universal set, set there are 40. So we have 35 so far which means the remaining five students are out in this area. Once you've organized the numbers, now we can go on to answer the questions a lot more easily uh, if we just know where to look on the diagram. So how many students do art and basketball? Well, if we look right here, these are the 20 students that do both art and basketball. And so that's the area that we could identify for that one. What about art only? Um, and so here's a number right here that represents art only. So remember, there were 25 students that do art. 20 of those do basketball and art, and the other five do art only. And so that's where that five is coming from. Those are the students that only do art. What about basketball only? All right, that would be the 10 that we see right here. So if I look at the basketball people, remember there's 30 basketball people, 
20 of them do art and basketball. The remaining 10 are, are basketball only. Would be that 10 right there. What about do neither? Uh, how many students don't do either art or basketball? Well, that's this guy right here, right? This is the uh, students who don't do art or basketball. And so we have those five that don't do either art or basketball. Uh, what about the students who only do one activity? Well, remember, these five only do art. These 10 only do basketball. So total, I have 15 students who only do one activity. There are other questions that can be asked. I just wanted to give you a handful of questions that would at least represent the most common questions that you could be asked. Uh, really quick, I want to throw in, if you're watching the video, I wanted to throw in the notation that would go with these because sometimes they don't come at you in the way of words. They come at you in the way of symbols. Uh, and so for the ones that said art only, so this area right here, so just a reminder that those are the things that are in set A and not in set B. So those are the people that do A only. So the things that are in A and not in B. Basketball only would be pretty similar. It's the stuff that is in B and not A. Right? Those are the people that do basketball only. So B and not A. What about do neither? Uh, there's more than one way to write this, uh, but one the most common way that you would see it um, is if I said do neither, that means, remember, this is the things that are in A or B. Those 35 are A or B. Um, so if I were to say A or B not, right, then these are the people that are not in A or B. So they don't do either art or basketball. The other way you could write that uh, would be to say the intersection of not A and not B. That would mean the same thing. Uh, that is also referring to these. This is the items uh, that are not in A and not in B. So last one here, that only do one activity. Um, there's, a, there's a few different ways that you could write this. This would probably only come at you in the, in the word problem sense uh, because there's a lot of different symbols that you could come up with to represent that. So we're not going to throw that one at you. You're not going to see that in symbol form, but definitely something good to know for word problems.